Turn your Bibles to John chapter 13, if you would please, this morning. John chapter 13. What it means to be like Christ. What was He like? And how can we as Christians be more like Him? John chapter 13, if you would please, and verse number 1. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that His hour was come, that He should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved His own which were in the world, He loved them unto the end. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would please anoint this Sunday school hour with your Holy Spirit power. I pray that that you would fill me and use me. Lord, you know I am weak. I know I am weak. There's nothing that can be said and done that will be helpful to your people except it come from your word and from your power. So Lord, I beg you for your power this morning. I beg you to guide my thoughts and my speech. And I pray that you'd help us to hear from your word the things that you would have us to hear. We pray these things as we ask it in Jesus' name. And amen. When God inspires a passage like this to be written, and the Bible says that Jesus, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. It's important for us to take notice of the wording. Why would God find it important to teach us that Jesus loved His own unto the end? Why would it be a phrase that God would want us to hear? I believe that there are a few different reasons why that may be. And if there is any attribute that we know of Jesus Christ... It is about His love. Last week we finished a two-week section on how Jesus lived a life of sacrifice and how that we as Christians, if we're going to be like the Savior, must be willing to live a life of sacrifice as well. But I want you to notice also the decidedly established love of Christ. Last week we set for our church the theme for this year, as I hope and believe it is what the Lord had for us. The theme being that essentially all things be done in love. In the book of 1 John, the Bible says, we love Him because He first loved us. We don't really know how to love people the way that we should until we come to Christ and His Spirit begins to teach us what real love looks like. A person cannot know true love until they see the love of Christ. The world today is filled with selfish love. Love that is based on what we get out of the people around us. Love that is based on the benefits and the things that we appreciate out of others. It's a very selfish love. There are different types of love in the Bible. There is love as we would know for our family. That, if I remember right, comes from uh, the word storge. It is the kind of love that you have for mother and father, brother and sister. It's a family type love. That type of love is a love that is expressed to us not only concerning family, but also that we should have that kind of love for our Christian brethren. But the kind of love that is expressed concerning God the Father and the kind of love that appears the most in Scripture is that of agape love. It is that type of godly love, that type of spiritual love, which can only be experienced and understood through our understanding of God Himself. The Bible says that God is love. We sing that song out of 1 John chapter number 4. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. 
and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Beloved, let us love one another. 1 John is filled with the subject of God's love. And when the Lord says, and when the Bible says that we love Him because He first loved us, there are things that must be understood. If you're going to be able to love God, you're going to have to first understand His great love for you. When a person begins to understand God's great love for us, we can begin then to love Him back. I was speaking with some on that point here even recently. Some have a tendency to be so down on themselves because they often don't understand God's great love for them. It's not that we should love ourselves, but rather that we should understand God's great love for us. And as a result then, that we should not be down on ourselves. The Lord loves us so much that He died for us. The Lord loves us so much that even though He lived with the disciples and for we think probably about three and a half years, walked with them nearly every day uh, for those three and a half years, the Bible says very pointedly that He loved them unto the end. Now what does that mean that He loved them unto the end? First of all, it means He loved them until the day He died. And that's saying a lot. Because those crazy, crazy disciples were part of His death. And during His death, the Bible says that even Peter himself followed afar off. But he loved them unto the end. He loved them in spite of their imperfections. What were some of their imperfections? Judas betrayed him. And even in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus still called him friend. Would you turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter number 26 and see it with me please this morning? Matthew chapter number 26. And look at verse number 50. Matthew chapter 26 and verse number 50. Now this one's going to be hard to hear, but if we're going to be like Christ, if we claim that we're Christians and we're going to be like Him, we have to understand what His love was like. The Bible says, And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took Him. Jesus called him friend out of the genuineness of his heart. He loved even Judas unto the end. So what kind of love is Christ-like love? It's love even through betrayal. The depth of that kind of love is so strong it's hard to comprehend. And as a Christian, boy, do we ever like to hold grudges. Jesus said unto him, Wherefore art thou come? He asks him the question, Where are you coming from, Judas? That's a convicting question, you know. You know, even when somebody walks away from the Lord, he still loves them. Judas, what you been up to, buddy? You ever been away from the Lord and sit in a church service for the first time in a long time and wonder if the Lord still loved you? You have to understand that just because the Lord speaks convictional phrases to your heart does not mean that He has stopped loving you. Rather, it means that He still loves you and He's trying to bring you home. There's an old song that we used to sing and, and, and you know, my group, as a, as a, we called ourselves the Bloodbought Quartet. I, I don't know why we were a quintet the entire time. But one of our members of the group used to sing, Come home, come home, your father really loves you. And we would sing that song together. Just because the Holy Spirit convicts your heart does not mean that it has turned to hatred because of your sin, but rather whom the Lord loveth, He chasteneth. He's calling out to you. He's asking you convictional questions. Why are you living that way? Why are you thinking that way? Why have you been doing that kind of stuff? Not because He hates you, but because He loves you. 
Because He wants to be in fellowship with you again. Because He wants to walk with you again. And if we were to apply that kind of love to others around us, we would not be able as a Christian to justify our anger towards others even when we feel betrayed. Let's be honest. People will disappoint. And people will sometimes betray. But to have a Christ-like love means to be able to love somebody in spite of their betrayal. Now what does it take to love somebody in spite of betrayal? It takes a lack of self-love first and foremost. The world today teaches to love yourself. Entire books have been written on loving yourself. And they say things like, if you don't love yourself, then you can't love others. And nothing could be farther from the truth. If you bury yourself into deep self-love, you won't know how to love others because others are always imperfect. Others always make mistakes. Everybody in this world that lives and breathes in this life makes mistakes. And if you begin to believe the world's philosophy that you should first love yourself and by loving yourself you learn how to love others, what it will do is make you wrapped up all into yourself and as a result, you won't be able to love others when they betray yourself. You won't be able to love others when they turn on you, yourself. Instead, what it will be is it will be such a selfish love that the moment something wrong happens to you, you'll shake your fist in the air in anger saying, why would you ever do such a thing to me? That's not Christ-like love. That's worldly love. That's the kind of love that the world sells so that you will love yourself and not others, so that you will hold vengeance and not have forgiveness, so that you will be full of self and never be able to care for others. Somebody once said, and I believe it to be true, a person who is all wrapped up in themselves is a very small package. Jesus was so selfless That even when he was betrayed, he still loved. Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? And he speaks unto him. He says, Judas, what have you been up to, buddy? Then came they and laid hands on him and took him. Jesus loved them unto the end. He loved even Judas all the way down to his betrayal. Well, what about this imperfection? Matthew chapter number 20 in your Bibles, if you would please. Matthew chapter number 20. Christ-like love is love in the face of betrayal. Matthew chapter number 20. And verse number 20, the Bible says, Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She saith unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on the, thy right hand and the other on the left in thy kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, We are able. He saith unto him, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared for my father. And when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. But Jesus called, unto, called them unto him and said, Ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your what? And, and whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. You see that? <laughs> Jesus' love was love in the face of betrayal. And Jesus' love was love in the face of people problems. <laughs> we think as he dealt with his disciples maybe sometimes that it had to be the most perfect union of people that ever lived. The reality is they were still human. And they had human desires. We see here that the mother of, uh, of Zebedee's sons wanted her sons to have the preeminent place in Jesus' kingdom. And, I mean, any loving mother would want that, I suppose. But 
as a result, it created tension between the disciples. And Jesus had to deal with people problems going on in the midst of his disciples. Now, look, often people are going to say and do things that frustrate us. And we're not talking about necessarily betrayal, but rather situations where they either don't understand or they don't want to understand, or maybe they just think more highly of themselves than they should, and as a result, tension is created. And in spite of all of the people problems that he had with them, he still loved every one of them to the end. And he heard the other ten murmuring against each other and said, let's all have a talk together. You know, sometimes things are not going to go right with others around us, and it's not a matter of betrayal. Some can allow small things like this to eat at them and begin to pull them apart from others because, oh really, you wanted your son or grandson or you wanted your daughter or granddaughter or you wanted uh, your children to have the preeminence? Well, I don't want anything to do with you. But instead, Jesus taught them to love each other anyway. And instead of getting frustrated and annoyed with them and throwing the baby out with the bathwater, he continued to love them right down to the end in spite of the fact that they didn't always love each other. This is the love of a parent who knows how to love their children, even when their children are fighting with each other. I remember sitting, um, sitting our kids down at one point and expressing. Now, they always have gotten along pretty well, but they are still siblings. And so, uh, uh, matter of fact, they get along a lot better than my sister and I did when we were younger. We fought like cats and dogs. But um, one of my sisters, uh, I won't tell you which one the oldest one is um, that I fought with all the time, uh, but... We, we fought constantly, oh, my soul, like cats and dogs. But my kids, they don't fight like that. They, they, you know, even when they have disagreements, they feel bad about it. And I tell them sometimes, y'all need to learn how to fight. This is crazy, you know. Uh, but, uh, but they really do. They have a good spirit with each other. But um, I remember there, were, there was a time when, boy, boy, they were picking at each other. And my wife and I sat them down and said, we need you to hear something. We love all of you, and it hurts us to hear you arguing with each other so much because I love you and I don't like to hear you picking on him and I love you and I don't like to hear you picking on her and I love you and I don't like to hear you picking on her and we had this conversation because we love them we don't like to hear the tension that's going on between them and sometimes the grief of situations going on around us can cause us to lose our love for others and Jesus instead loved his disciples to the end even though they were probably a little bit annoying with each other and certainly were asking questions that weren't good questions and causing tension within the group he still loved them in spite of all of their people problems Jesus loved in the face of betrayal he loved in the face of people problems Listen, Christian, you have got to learn how to get over things and move on. People are people. Humans are humans. We're all imperfect. Don't hold that over each other. It doesn't help in any way, shape, or form with your own spirit. We see in John chapter number 20 that Thomas did not believe that Jesus had raised from the dead. Let's look at that one together, if you would, please. John chapter number 20. I guess I've got to be done. I've got a few of these to go over. John chapter number 20. And verse number 25. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. He loved them in spite of their unbelief. Christian, you ever get to the point where your faith is tried? Sure you do. I have. And I will in the future. There are trials of faith that spring up in our hearts and minds that cause us to doubt. And unfortunately, it is a very human thing to doubt. Even John the Baptist doubted whether or not Jesus Christ was the Messiah, even though he had himself preached that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. We can all have times where we doubt. Jesus taught us that he loved those even that had doubts and did not believe. Can I say to you that if there have been times in your life where you have doubted things of the Word of God or you have doubted 
parts of your faith that you have been taught. That doesn't mean that God is against you and that He has stopped loving you. He proves to us through Thomas's life that He can love even in unbelief. And Christian, how can we transplant that over to our lives? You ever had people that didn't believe in you? <laughs> Hello? You ever had somebody that didn't, didn't believe in you as a person or didn't believe in the choice that you made or didn't believe in the direction you were going or whatever the case may be? Ever had people say, or at least by their actions, seem that they didn't believe in you? Jesus loved people even though they lacked belief in Him. Listen, in order to do that, you have to be settled and established in God's love for you, as we mentioned in the beginning of this, because when others begin to doubt you, you can lean upon the love of the Lord and not have to worry about their love or the lack of it. Thomas's unbelief was something that we often refer to, but we also forget that the Bible says that Jesus loved all of them unto the end, even in their unbelief. Listen, we need as Christians to learn how to love people whether they believe in us or not, whether they like us or not, whether they stand for us or not. Peter wouldn't even stand for the Lord. He denied Him three times. Yes? And when he had an opportunity to stand for the Lord, instead he betrayed Him. And what does the Bible say? He loved them unto the end. Peter's speak first mentality and think later led to his eventual betrayal of Jesus Christ. But Jesus loved him unto the end. Christian, if we're going to love as Jesus loves, we're going to love people in their imperfections. We're going to love people even through betrayal. We're going to love people even through problems. We're going to love people even during unbelief. And we're going we're to love people every single time that they do things against us because... We have the love of Christ. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would please help us to establish these truths in our hearts and minds. Help us to understand the love of Christ. We see that His love is established and that we can rely upon it. But that sometimes, Lord, we may even doubt the love that God has towards us because... We struggle with things in this world. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to be set and established in God's love and help us to be able to love others accordingly. We pray this as we ask it in Jesus' name and amen. All right, we will have church here in about 10 minutes. Until then, you are dismissed.